Figuring out VLAN names and numbers. By the time you're done here, you will know the best way to name and number the VLANs in your network. Now, keep in mind, this nugget is part of a larger series that talks all about architecting and configuring VLANs for a real-world environment based around VIA, which is the company that I manage. We went through the rules of VLANs, and I created a video just on this topic saying there are only three reasons you would create a VLAN, and that is because they have different security, scalability, or treatment requirements. We also looked at the VIA network environment, talked about the departments that we have and primarily the technology that we had, and then thought about how do we separate those things into those three requirements, security, scalability, and treatment. And that led us to ask these questions. Are there security concerns? Are there different things that consume a lot of IP addresses? Are there different networks that need special treatment? There's our three requirements yet again thrown in our face. And we went through that actually in the last video I created in this series. And I left off with these two questions. And I said, we'll talk about that one actually right about now. Because this aligns directly with VLAN numbering. Now, I mentioned at the beginning of this nugget that I was going to talk about how to name and number your VLANs. Naming them is actually really simple. You should name your VLANs typically around exactly what they do. If I have IP phones on the network, name the VLAN voice over IP. If I have BYOD and guest devices, name the VLAN guests. The name is really logical. Now, we talked about in the previous nugget how we have managed devices and this flexible VLAN, which I call the Flex VLAN, which is used for lab environments or setting up a customer at our site and so on and so forth. And I introduced all of these names when we first spec'd out what VLANs we would need. Now, just so you know, this is an invalid name. VLAN 10 should be server, and then I would put a dash static, no spaces. But what I want you to catch here is the VLAN numbering that is used. First off, VLAN 1 is a security best practice not to use. Why is that? Well, because it's the default VLAN and everything is a member of VLAN 1 out of the box. So a lot of times it's very easy to miss a port that's assigned to a VLAN that is the default. So if you actually use VLAN 1 for things, and maybe it's some sensitive things, maybe that's your server VLAN, and you forget to configure a port and move it out of that VLAN, somebody could inadvertently plug in and gain access to the server VLAN just because of forgotten assignment. Likewise, VLAN 1 is the default native VLAN, and that contains all of the switch management traffic, sometimes router management traffic that is used for backend communication. Again, not something that you would want somebody to see, by inadvertently plugging into a network. For that reason, VLAN 1 should not be used. You can't delete it, you can't rename it. The only thing you can choose to do is to move everything out of VLAN 1. Now, why do I title this slide, Via VLANs, Thinking Small? Well, because this is the number one way people create VLANs. They think about the VLANs that they need, they go through somewhat of an identification process like we did in another nugget, and then they just line them up. First VLAN will be VLAN 2, we'll make that voice over IP. Next one, VLAN 3, will be the guest. Next one, VLAN 4, will be managed. And this isn't a bad approach. Don't hear me wave a flag and say you should never think small. If you have an organization like VIA, that is 30 employees, nothing really crazy when it comes to technology, then thinking small is an okay thing to do. However, thinking small does not position it for growth. Remember our three reasons for creating VLANs, security, scalability, and treatment. I want to give special attention to this one for a moment. What if one of your VLANs ends up outgrowing its subnet? Well, typically when you do subnetting, which by the way is going to be another topic that I have in this series, is how do you align the subnets to the VLANs in the best way? You'll usually do your subnetting in order and you'll use different subnet size based on whatever you want to accommodate for that VLAN. Well, this one just outgrew it. Or more likely, this one just outgrew it. What are you going to do? Well, this is where the administrator usually looks like this and goes, uh, well, I guess I'll put it at VLAN six. Maybe that's what they were thinking when they first segmented this into a VLAN number of one, two, three, four, five, and then jumped up to 10. Maybe this was their little section for growth. And that may work okay, but it's totally going to misalign your subnets. Oftentimes, as you'll see when I talk about VLAN subnetting, You'll create subnets in a contiguous range. That means in order. And certain numbers mean certain things. By numbering your VLANs like this, you don't give yourself room for growth. You don't give yourself what I would call a plus one approach. What does plus one mean? It means we take this small thinking VLAN design and expand it to something like this. 
a really simple change. But look at those numbers. What do you think we can now do? Think about it. We can add one, right? If your voice over IP phones outgrow their subnet, then just add VLAN 21. That'll be the next voice over IP. And everybody recognizes and realizes the number 21 falls right in line with voice over IP. When you align that up to a subnet, we'll just say it's 10.1.21. something, just as a simple example. You'll be able to easily recognize based on the IP address that that's typically an IP phone. Now that's just a bonus. And again, I'm getting a little bit into the subnetting because that's what helps the plus one approach make sense. Guess VLAN outgrew it? No problem, add 31, add 32, add 38, plus one, plus one, plus one. Those BYOD devices grow out of control. This gives you an expandable evolution of your VLAN numbering. That should accommodate just about every major organization outside of the really big ones. I'm talking a massive college campus or maybe an enterprise sized organization. But once you get the plus one mindset, it's easy enough. How about do this? Our VLAN numbers go from one to 4,096. This will give you a whole lot of plus ones that you can grow into. Now you'll see at the very bottom, I threw out this VLAN 777, that's the native VLAN. Remember, VLAN one should not be used, so you have to have something for your native VLAN traffic. And again, fly by review, the native VLAN is used on trunk ports, typically switch to switch connections, but nowadays with virtualization has moved to switch to server. And if you run a router on a stick, switch to a router. All of these links send tagged traffic across them. But what if there's traffic that goes between these devices that isn't tagged, that doesn't belong to a specific designated VLAN? For instance, Cisco Discovery Protocol or the industry standard Link Layer Discovery Protocol. Both of those are multicast traffic that is simply sent out from the switch every 60 seconds. Helps identify that switch to each other. What VLAN do you use for that? Well, of course you use the native VLAN. I've been using the number 777 for my native VLAN for years and years and years. So if you ever stumble on that on a network, just think Jeremy was here, <laughs> right? You can just pick whatever VLAN number you'd like to. Just make sure it doesn't cross into production traffic and you keep it consistent across the entire site. You now understand the best way to name and number the VLANs in your network. And we've selected the scalable scheme that we're going to use for the VM network.